I've finally been able to snag a Cadillac Lyric for a real world test. This is the dual motor all wheel drive model. Is it the Cadillac of EVs? Let's find out. I originally drove Lyric, the first all-electric Cadillac, at the Rear Drive Debut Edition press launch in June of 2022. Impressed, I look forward to testing it fully, real-world range tests and all. There were sniggly things to work out. Odd door handles, a back seat without separate climate control, software gremlins. This <laughs> lacked standard-of-the-world polish, so I checked in for a loaner, not once, over a dozen times. Meanwhile, thousands of buyers waited patiently for their cars to arrive. GM offered only radio silence. Nearly two years after the press event drive, this has been dropped in my driveway. With a look as crisp as a freshly opened box of Air Force Ones, the neighbors have gathered to stare. Cadillac squandered its opportunity for a splashy, confident entrance to the EV segment. But now that Lyric is being produced in meaningful numbers, it could be its best seller. This is a deep machine, so I'm taking a detailed look. It's been a long time since I've driven a vehicle that gets the kind of attention that Lyric has seen. It really draws eyeballs. Many people stop me to ask about it, including the price, which always makes me ask, how much do you think it is? Nobody guessed under $100,000. A handful thought it was $120 or more. A base rear drive tech model starts at around $58,000. I went on the configurator, built the most expensive one that I could. Premium paint, all the major options, top trim level, all wheel drive. Still under 80 grand. That's with destination, but not including the $7,500 federal tax credit that Lyric qualifies for again. This dual motor all wheel drive Sport 3 version that I'm driving is 70 grand if buyers qualify for Uncle Sam's incentive. Sport looks a little different than luxury trims. The bright work is smoked. The wheels are unique, 22 inches at the three level. Sport's nose has a different graphic treatment, fewer stripes, more triangles. The walk up animation remains though, a lyric signature that a passerby actually applauded. Lighting is the new tail fins and chrome, I guess. I'll let it play out while I explain the two level of sport or luxury trims are the sweet spot. With the tax credit, they retail for around $63,000. The two level adds GM Super Cruise and an impressive 19 speaker AKG audio system important for the full Cadillac experience. The funky door fins from the debut edition are gone. Sport gets body colored handles. The charge door still has the Weebles wobble. Really? This rides on GM's modular Ultium architecture, which is cool tech, but ramping up production proved to be problematic for the general. Only 9,100 lyrics were produced in 2023. The factory in Spring Hill, Tennessee is finally pumping these out in volume. This platform is also under Chevy Blazer EV, Acura ZDX, and Honda Prologue. Using a 12 module battery, this 102 kilowatt hour pack uses a wireless network for cell management to save weight. Range is rated at 307 miles. That's seven less than the single motor rear drive Lyric. The dual motor setup makes 500 horsepower and 450 pound feet of torque. Fun fact, this number stands for the amount of twist in Newton meters, uh, rounded off. Since launch, General Motors has made a number of changes to Lyric. Has it added front storage? Nope, no it hasn't. General Motors engineers have explained to me that they package all of the components in the nose. That eliminates the center console that runs between the two seats. Basically, space where you're going to use it the most. Once past the walk-up animation, the show continues. Bars on the display confirm the battery charge level. Now, considering the dramatic nature so far, it's surprising that there's no sonic or graphic flourish on startup. No head-up display available either. The single-speed transmission selector operates by pulling inward, then up or down. Regeneration level can be set in the menu. Volt and Bolt drivers will recognize the regen paddle. On Lyric, 
it's progressive. Squeeze harder for more recuperation. Drive modes are fairly basic. Sport does not have the option of adaptive dampers. There's interior performance tones, but they're so subtle my mics don't pick them up and passengers didn't even notice them. With 7 inches of ground clearance, uh, maybe go with Rivian R1S or Hummer EV for off-roading. A single motor Lyric bolts from zero to 60 in just under seven seconds. The dual motor easily shaves a second off that time. Let's call it four and a half. That's good solid acceleration number, not ludicrously quick, if you catch my drift. Now, normally EVs have that low end torque punch off the line. Lyric does things a little bit differently. It moves off the line in a measured, regal way. Lots of confident power when you're at speed. When you're passing on two-lane roads, it's a cinch. Everything about Lyric is creamy smooth. It's not Coupe de Ville floaty or isolated. Cadillac's ride quality hasn't been that way for a decade or more. Some reputations are built to last, for better or worse. Looking for a high-performance Lyric? <laughs> You're gonna be waiting for a V model. Sport is pretty much a trim package, and this is set up for comfort. However, it's not loose or sloppy or floaty. It's actually a pretty good driving dynamic with good steering weight. It's, it's just not sporty. It ought to be a law that any sport vehicle should include some meaningful performance enhancements. Now get off my lawn. The perch is elevated. That's what people want in vehicles these days. And overall, Lyric's visibility is terrific. Really easy to see out of. Unless I'm checking my blind spot, looking over my left shoulder, I basically get a face full of B-pillar. For cross shopping, Lyric's competitors are Audi Q8 e-tron, BMW iX, Lexus RZ, Mercedes EQE, and Tesla Model X or Y. It's kind of a tweener thing there. Most of these are significantly more expensive. Lyric is not a small rig, 7 inches longer and 9 inches wider than an XT5. And like all EVs, it's a porker, 5,800 pounds. This heft is felt. Electrification really suits luxury brands. This is whisper quiet, even on the highway at 75 miles an hour. There's little wind noise coming off the A-pillar. Um, but here's the thing, under 20 miles an hour, hear that? That's the pedestrian warning tone. And every single one of my passengers notices it. Um, some people call it angelic. Other people call it ghostly. More noticeable than usual, check it on your test drive. One pedal driving is definitely a thing in Lyric. You can either switch it on using the touchscreen or the steering wheel paddle. It can be quite aggressive. Comes to a complete stop, the dynamic is adjustable. This is one of the best one pedal experiences I've had. It's especially easy to read the power flow. GM offers lots of information. The EPA rates the dual motor Lyric at 307 miles of range. Now, in Seattle this week, it's been in the mid 50s. And I've driven a good mix of highway and city driving, um, and I'm seeing. 280 miles of range. Not bad. A second range test in the mid 60s with a similar mix of driving netted closer to 300. I didn't empty the pack during round two, so I'll emphasize estimate. When towing a 3,500 pound max for the dual motor Lyric, it drops significantly like all EVs. Same with efficiency in colder temperatures and at highway speeds. Speaking of, Let's talk about Super Cruise, uh, just the cliff notes, because this is a very deep system. It's true hands-free driving, not just 10 seconds off the wheel or even a minute. I could go for hours. It relies on GPS and LiDAR mapping data, plus cameras and sensors. It's very confident. As long as the steering wheel LED is green, you're good to go. 
it does want you to pay attention. There's a camera here that watches you, so if you're doing social media too much, it will shut the system down. Want to change lanes? Just hit the turn signal. It'll check to make sure that things are okay and move over. You can automate this process so you don't even have to do that. It'll just steer around traffic. Here's the thing, it does rely on mapping data, so it's only available on certain roads. However, there's 750,000 miles of that, so it really shouldn't be an issue. This is the best semi-autonomous driving system that I've driven, and I've pretty much driven them all. Less covered is performance in heavy slogging. In traffic jam assist mode, performance is top shelf. The standard lane keeping system, when Super Cruise is unavailable, is not all that great. Just as important as range when traveling? Charging speed. At commercial DC fast chargers, Lyric's max charge rate is 190 kilowatts. The Champs, Genesis Electrified GV70 and GV60 are measurably faster, around 235 kilowatts if you're at a charger that can provide that rate. This 350 terminal is delivering a low level due to a combination of cold temperatures, no preconditioning, and a fairly high charge in the pack already. In a separate session, I saw 180 kilowatts for a sustained amount of time with 10 to 80% taking around 30 minutes. BioLyric and Cadillac throws in either two years of unlimited EVgo charging or $1,500 towards the installation of a home charger, which does not include the cost of the equipment. Set a destination in the Navi system and it establishes a charging route. Now, juicing up at home is much less expensive, a quarter of the cost in my case, so charging where you sleep is always best. Using 240 volt level 2, the rate is 31 miles every hour. An optional 19.2 kilowatt hour onboard charger at $1,500 raises that to 51 miles every hour, but only with a dedicated 100 amp circuit at your home, which is not very common. It does nothing to the DC fast charge rate. Luxury and sport interiors look pretty much the same. Exclusive to the three level, a $4,000 Napa leather package with a wrap dash can be added. It's not on my tester. These are the synthetic hide chairs also found in ones and twos with heat, venting, and a mild massage feature. Nice if I could figure out how the controller worked. Even my wife was confused and she's smart. The 33 inch curved screen is a big draw. It's one continuous display with three zones. This one is kind of a control panel for the midsection, which is extremely customizable and can even be set to a minimal blackout mode. Shades of sob there. The infotainment section has an easy to use arrangement and flow, plus a rest blow to steady hands when driving on rough roads. This controls it too, but unlike the other substantial hardware, this feels less Cadillac, more Mattel. All controls and switches are Cadillac specific, no repurposed Chevy buttons in here. There's a customizable dock to place icons most used. This is very handy. With the heft of a 1950s Eldorado brome, you'll look forward to opening the doors. Sport 3 comes with a digital rear view mirror, which is great when you load the cargo area up so much you can't see out the back window or doing fun camera tricks like this. The bird's eye view is nothing special, but Lyric's automated parking system works well. Storage is well thought out. Door pockets have finished compartments. There's loads of space for a purse or backpack. Small items stash here. If your favorite travel mug has a handle, you're good to go. The glove box release is here. This might deter thieves that think there's no cubby in this space. Now, like Porsche Taycan, Lyric has a console cover that's long and awkward to use. Uh, note to GM, copy only the good stuff. Lyric has Google Assistant that works as long as you're paying the monthly data subscription fee. It can handle some in-car functions. Hey, Google, turn on the heated seats. Got it, turning on the seat heater for the driver. Others, not so much. Hey, turn on the massaging seats. 
Sorry, I don't understand. It's best for navigation and maybe entertainment. Hey, tell me a joke. Why was the student's report card wet? It was below sea level. <laughs> Sound effects, <laughs> nice touch. Kind of corny. At least for now, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are along for the ride. I find Lyric's phone charging slot extremely handy. Seems like Cadillac blew the lighting budget on the outside. It's minimal inside, but materials are authentic. Lyric's cabin may not have Audi e-tron's richness or the Tron bling of Mercedes EQE, but this is easily 10 grand less. Oh, and the AKG sound is significantly better than the one in X-T4. Rich and loud with natural sound staging, my only sniggle is the bass booms a little bit at high volumes. Lyric has two rows of seating and belts for five. I recently went to my doctor and he has verified my height at 5'9". That said, headroom? Very generous. Same with knee, leg, and foot room. The cushions are high enough so that thigh support is excellent. Getting my size 11s out, no problem at all. Getting car seats in and out will be a breeze. Door pockets are big enough for a regular sized water bottle. The same hefty door releases are back here. These feel great. No built-in sunshades, and this is the top trim model. Happy to say both seat backs get pockets, and look at the detail here. People sitting in back will enjoy this view. Sport 3 not only gets a separate climate zone, there are heated seats in the outboard positions. Power sources, not a problem. Also, like the metal detail here. The floor is board flat, that's great for foot room. The big glass roof, which is standard, is especially dramatic when sitting back here. And yes, it does have a shade. Um, you can buy an optional opening roof. It's not very often that I say a back seat can take on three average sized adults with no issues. That applies to Lyric. It's very spacious back here. The carpool gang will love it. Even without the lighting theatrics, Lyric is a handsome rig. Wide, low, and long of hood, it's Americana with a dollop of mid-century modern. More than any other Cadillac, it has an effortless, youthful, athletic look inside and out that's unique even to the brand. Uh, okay, it shares a design language with Celestic, so even if you can't come up with 300 grand for one of those, 70 for this is a steal. I'd like a rear wiper, though. In my week with Lyric, it drew attention the way Porsche Taycan did when it first hit the scene, but only half the admirers knew this was electric. The Emerald Lake metallic paint is worth the extra 625 bucks. Personally, I prefer sports grill pattern over luxury trims, but there's not a huge difference. As for build quality, the fine folks in Spring Hill do a good job. Mostly, Virgos will want these trim pieces to align perfectly. An important note, this has the latest big software update that must be done at the dealership. The only glitches seen in a week was this. Twice. No idea what it meant. And the liftgate was fussy for an hour or so. Sport 3 comes with the kick to open tailgate. Pro tip, you don't really need it. Even with your hands full, just nail the badge with your elbow and you're in. No spare, only self-sealing tires. Common, but a pet peeve of mine. The supplied dual voltage charge cord comes in a nice case. Under floor storage is decent. There are remote releases. These don't raise the backs. The 60-40 split lacks a pass-through. No 40-20-40 setup available. The floor is almost, but not completely flat. Max cargo space is 61 cubic feet. I do the TP trunk test with the seat backs up. Lyric's roofline is a cross between traditional SUVs and sport back style. It measures out at 28 cubic feet or an ample eight packs of the two ply. That's the same as the standard roofline Q8 e-tron and electrified GV70, one more than Lexus RZ. Let's finish this up with red light, green light. Green light. The dual motor Lyric is powerful with as advertised range in moderate temperatures. The design and light show turns heads, a lot of them. Many are millennials and Gen Zers. The modern Cadillac driving dynamic is as solid as the chassis structure. 
And while not inexpensive, there's a lot of value happening here, especially when equipped with Super Cruise. Yellow lights? The handsome, practical, and roomy cabin lacks the ambient lighting panache found in competitors, and there's that overly large console door. Lots of dedicated buttons with substantial feel. Too bad the interface controller feels straight out of a cereal box. Sport adds a refined look, but doesn't add any sportiness to the driving dynamics. Red lights. Long distance travelers will find the 190 kilowatt max charge rate to be slower than some competitors. Lyric is Cadillac quiet at speed. The warning tone under 25 miles an hour is intrusive. The charge port wobble is Bush League for a premium brand. Finally, GM has left buyers in the dark about delivery. Some are still waiting after placing orders 18 months ago. Ford has been good about communicating these kinds of delays, even sending gifts in some cases. Cadillac has left deposit holders twisting in the wind, not on brand. Lyric has a lot going for it. For starters, in the luxury space, it's a great value. It's also quiet, comfortable, powerful, it has great tech, it looks terrific, and it's a useful SUV. Is it perfect? No, no car is, but good to see General Motors let Cadillac be Cadillac. In some ways, the mark has struggled with its identity for the last 40 years, in many cases trying to be something it's not. Lyric is a confident statement, finally, a spot-on expression of what the brand should be. If Cadillac can produce more vehicles like this without embarrassing delays, its future is lyrical. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help the pun. Interesting that while Chevy Blazer EV suffered a stop sale because of software issues, Lyric did not, though there were plenty of complaints that it was far from fully baked. Again, this latest overhaul felt stable in my week with it. Ladies, gentlemen, Rob Calero doing driving duties today. Normally it's Martin Campbell, but Martin is picking up his new car. It's an EV. I'm going to let him tell you what it is. Yeah, we're not going to tell, but, uh, you know, thanks, Rob. Um, I pay Rob in coffee. Feel free to donate to the Driven Coffee Fund. We should have an unboxing of his, and I'll give you a hint. It's one of Lyric's competitors. It's not a Lyric. Before I go, some personal news. I have finally installed level two charging at my home, finally. My house is very old. My garage is concrete. It's set into the side of a hill. It was a lot of work, but I did it right. Got a nice charge point unit. What a great setup. And I'm doing this because I am buying my own electric vehicle and whatever I end up with is going to be the subject of dozens of deep dive videos. And after driving Lyric for a week, it's on my short list. Yeah, it's that good. And you might know that I own a plug-in hybrid Cadillac ELR. I would not buy this because I'm brand loyal. I'm definitely not. Um, the ELR, I got an absolute screaming deal on. It looks great and it's been a terrific vehicle. This I would buy because it's a great value and it offers the utility that I need. So we'll see. Thanks for watching. Hey, you're still here. Subscribe to this channel, click notifications. If you've got a question, leave it in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. And if you want to support this channel, I support that. Uh, you can do it using YouTube Super Thanks or even better for me, Venmo, because Venmo doesn't take 30% the way Google does. Really, Google? Are you not making enough money? Jeez. Anyways, thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.